From the Sumire Foundation and Connor B. Judge Foundation, this is Demystifying NMO. With support from Genentech. Hello, welcome back to Demystifying NMO. As usual, I am your host, Chelsea of the Connor B. Judge Foundation. Today, I'm joined by recurring guests, Alexis Marta, as well as Julie Aldridge, both the Sumaira Foundation ambassadors. Alexis is currently pursuing a master's of public health degree at Johns Hopkins University, and Julie Aldridge is a mom and, again, Sumaira Foundation ambassador from West Virginia. So delighted to have these wonderful women um, and enema warriors on the pod and talk about their experiences and pro tips with temperature sensitivity and how this can flare up their enema symptoms and how they learn to be mindful and cope with it. We have... Lexi and Julie here, both Sumire Foundation ambassadors, and today we're going to be talking about temperature sensitivity, living with NMO. And so I thought we'd just jump into a little bit about what do we mean by temperature sensitivities. All NMO and multiple sclerosis patients will understand what we mean, that basically your body's just more susceptible to a really extreme temperature, whether it's really hot or even really cold, and it can actually kind of... Um, flare up your symptoms in some ways. I thought we could just kind of talk a little bit about what your experiences are and then we can kind of talk about the science of it and all of that good stuff. Lexi or Julie, who, if you guys wanted to share some of your experiences, is it, is it like more of the heat? Is it the cold? For me personally, it's heat, but I'm, I always say I'm very, very lucky that any symptoms or I guess like heat sensitivity is very, very subtle for me. Um, or mild. So when it usually only happens when I've been outside for like extended periods of time. So like a day at the beach, oh, I am exhausted, delirious. Like I remember the one time, and this was like one of the only times I've gone with NMO because it was just such an awful like experience. Um, but I came home and I just laid down in bed with ice packs everywhere. Like I couldn't even like change out of my bathing suit and it was just not fun. So it's just exhaustion, confusion. And then for me, I also, because um, I had paralysis waist down and I had bladder issues because of it. So then it also comes with like this burning sensation in my bladder that you're like, okay, is this a flare up? Is it a symptom that means I'm going to have an attack or is it a UTI? And it's just kind of like, you have to wait it out and figure out which one. We just came back from the beach. My parents have a place in Hilton Head or on Hilton Head. So we go quite a bit. And um, I have to make sure I'm near the water or in the water most of the time. My husband makes sure there's always an umbrella around for me. Luckily, I'm very dark complected, so I don't really have a problem with, like, the burning and all that. But the heat just... Everybody knows I'm going to end up laying down or take a nap or something. I mean, it's the heat really just gets to me really bad. It's funny that you bring up Hilton Head. My mom, a pandemic silver lining is that she's gotten extra into like, what can we do to like maximize our family experiences, right? So she bought a condo right. as a vacation home in Hilton. She rents it out. Anyways, it's wonderful. So that was like our first post-vaccine trip, um, actually right in Austin. My husband was a mess on a B-cell depleter. He got vaccinated. We drove down to Savannah and Hilton Head. Anyways, I say all of this because we chose to go in February because we knew it wouldn't be very hot, which would be better for his MS. And so we're going to Hilton Head. We're driving down next week, and it's going to be way different for Austin than when he went in February, where we walked on the beach all the time. We didn't care about what time of day. It was like low 70s. It was perfect. But this this uh, trip will look a bit different because obviously it will be very hot. And, you know, where most people think of like, oh, beach vacation, laying in the sun, that's amazing. Uh, he's going to be like maybe out in the morning or the evening or just like you said, Julie, always in the water. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because it will it'll obviously flare up his symptoms. And for him, uh, he's legally blind. So he'll be like, he's like, I'm completely blind now. And, and like, obviously, just like, like Lexi was saying, like very fatigued, he gets like, I guess you could describe, I don't, he doesn't really have cognitive issues, but he'll, he'll feel very confused and disoriented with the heat. So I will be love vacation. It's going to be great. You know, these are just things that you have to keep in mind and be mindful of. 
before we keep going into your guys' experiences, because I think that's actually what's most important to hear, I just wanted to, like, talk about, like, the science of it and what we know. So, uh, historically, right, when people with MS, it was always, right, classified as MS, you know, back in the day, whether it was yeah. NMO or not. You know, we called this this temperature sensitivity to heat where it would, like, bring out people's symptoms and exacerbate them as UTOPS phenomenon. So the clinician researcher who first identified this and put a name on it, of course, it's his name. You know, and it used to be a way to help with diagnosis is you put patients, like, in a hot room or out in the sun or in a hot bath, and it would just bring out their symptoms. Um, so you could be like, oh, this is a classic MS symptom, like, uh, visual disturbances or fatigue or pain um, or spasticity even. And, you know, I think a big concern that patients have is like, oh no, if I'm out and I'm getting really heated up, is this going to like worsen my disease overall? And fortunately, while it's extremely uncomfortable and not pleasant and, you know, we should try to avoid, it's not like long-term worsening the disease. And we mm -hmm. think that this is happening because, right, if you have demyelination or you have very sensitive nerves or destroyed astrocytes that provide nourishment to the nerves, um, the neuron, the axon that's lost its coating is more sensitive. And so if you think of like heating up uh, an electrical line, that's not good. Um, and that's kind of a bit what's happening when you are experiencing extreme heat as an NMO or MS patient. I was wondering, you guys kind of brought it up a little bit already, what you guys do to like manage the uh, temperature sensitivity. Could you speak a little bit more to some like tips or tricks you guys have? When I'm sitting on the beach, I know this sounds really weird, but um, we always have a cooler, you know, with ice in it. And I will put ice anywhere I can put ice. And my feet, one of my feet especially isn't super, well, I'm losing the feeling in it and, you know, I, drag my leg and all that stuff. So a lot of times I will put ice on the bottoms of my feet because it won't bother me as much. I can still feel it. But like if I put it in the sand and just roll my feet on it, it seems to cool me off a little bit. I know that sounds really weird, but it, it actually, whatever works is yes. my, my motto. Yeah. Because I can't feel it as much that it would be like, oh my gosh, there's ice on the bottom of my feet. I'm, you know, it hurts or, so it's just almost like a cooling effect for me. And then I, I literally will just, Stick it wherever, wherever I can get it to stay. <laughs> My tip is I just drink a heck of a lot of water. And I mean, I guess that goes for any of my symptoms anytime, whether it's heat related or not. I find that drinking a lot of water just gets your body moving. It gets everything feeling good. And especially if it's you're hot and the water is nice and cold, like it definitely helps. Hydration. Yes. Yeah, so important. You know, have you guys ever experienced that you felt uh, you were concerned that maybe your heat, the heat sensitivity, did you ever confuse it or get scared that it was a relapse? Definitely. I, like I said, like I have bladder issues either when I'm like dehydrated or I'm like really, really hot and my bladder starts bothering me. I have like a like maybe like a three hour rule where I drink a lot of water in those three hours. And if it goes away, then I know that it's... Um, it's just like dehydration slash heat sensitivity. If it doesn't go away, but no other symptoms occur, I know it's a UTI. And if it persists and other symptoms occur on top of it, then I know that it's a relapse. So that's like what I try and do. You have to be patient with yourself and really know your body and like understand like what's happening and try not to freak yourself out. Because if you freak out every time you think you're having an attack, then that's just going to lighten your cortisol levels and then induce an attack potentially. So you just have to be patient with yourself and try and understand your body and troubleshoot. Like if your computer's not working, you, you turn it on and off and you look through the settings. Same with your body. You try like maybe take a nap, drink some water, turn it on and off and be patient and figure it out. My bladder is between that and my eyes. It's my worst symptom. I actually have a bladder stimulator. I had one, um, surgically implanted last December. So it has helped a lot, but I have noticed even when I get really hot, I seem, well, I came home with a UTI again from the beach. Both times we've been this year, I came home with a UTI. Me so, too. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, you just kind of have to sh watch your body and shut it down and back on again. It's just something that I feel like we have to deal with. I mean, there's, I don't feel like, I don't know. I just feel like it's always something and that I know my bladder is going to act up in the heat. 
Wow. Yeah. You guys have to be mindful um, of so much. And I like how you emphasize like the importance of knowing your body and like also being educated and empowered with the basics of, of NMO. Um, and so that you can tweeze things out. Like, is this just, is this just, I put that in quotes, uh, temperature related. Is it a relapse? Is this an infection? Right. Cause it's, you know, constantly having to remind yourself that a relapse is new or worsening neurological symptoms lasting for at least 24 hours without presence of fever or infection. As you guys point out, it's not a UCI fever, right? Increasing the body's core temperature is going to flare up your symptoms, whether, uh, you know, it's, it's a fever, like, a, a, you know, your body fighting off an infection or if it's, you know, the external temperature, um, always tweezing that out. Have you ever found also like that you get um, overheated and that worsens your symptoms um, when you're working out or just like moving? For me, it usually only happens after like extended exposure. And I don't know about you, but I'm not like a working out type of person. So <laughs> I've never worked out long enough to figure that out. Um, mine is usually just, you know, if I'm out in the heat for a long time and I mean like five plus hours, I can do like short stints in the heat and I'm fine. I walk a lot. That's all I really do anymore. Occasionally, I will pick up a tennis racket because my kids, they all play competitive tennis. So, but I don't do very much anymore because I know I walk to try to keep moving because I don't want to stop moving. Obviously, it's kind of like a catch-22 for us. You stop moving, bad things happen, you know, and then, but if you keep moving, bad things happen. So... It's a hard place to be in because yeah. I'll, I'll walk and then I'll notice my leg dragging or, well, someone will tell me, pick up your foot, your legs drag, you know, whatever. And then I know that's, it's time to stop, but by then I am pouring sweat anyway. So it feels like when it's hot out, I, I get so sensitive to it. I don't know. I'm sure everyone's like that, but. Yeah. My husband, we have a Peloton. We got, this was our big COVID purchase. And so my husband, again, with MS, the only reason why I keep bringing him up, when he works out, obviously he gets overheated and he like, I don't know, tries to impress himself or something on the Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the catch 22, right? He knows that you don't need to do a fancy Peloton or obviously you just, like you said, keep moving, walking, whatever. So he, that's why he does it. He knows it's really good for his body, but yeah, then he like gets very uncomfortable. His symptoms flare up. He's completely disoriented after and but yeah, he has to always like be mindful and balance it for your yeah. health. FYI, to anybody who's listening, um, I know that from the Multiple Sclerosis Association of America, um, NMO, candid NMO patients would be included in this. All you have to do is submit like some sort of documentation from your clinician that says you have a diagnosis of NMO or MS, something where you're temperature sensitive to heat. And for free, they'll send you a cooling vest. And my husband has one and like, he puts it on and he honestly almost looks like he's in like the Air Force or something or like a SWAT team. You know what I mean? Because he's all like padded yeah. up with his armor. He doesn't use it all the time, but that it seems to provide benefit. And they'll give you like, you, you obviously leave it in the freezer. It gets cold. You put the vest on. They'll give you like wristbands. You can put them on your ankles. You'll look kind of funky, but it seems to help. Um, mm -hmm. And then I would say the other, his big strategy is staying inside where there's AC. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but then you feel bad that's my problem I mean not to talk about my children the whole time but um I have four children um teenager down to 12 so they're all kind of in there together but and they're all very active one is really good at basketball three play competitive tennis and one also swims and I I don't feel like it's fair to them if I say, listen, we can't go because I've got to stay inside. Because my goal, one of my main goals is for my NMO not to affect oh. my family. So then I think sometimes, because I feel like probably most of us in this community feel that way. I feel like we are some of the last to ask for help when we, when we need help the most. And I, But I don't want to affect my family or my children. It's not fair to them if they have to sit things out because... I'm sick. I hate to use the word sick, but disabled. So I try and I think I push myself too far at times too. And especially in the summer and in the heat, because you know, you're constantly preaching, go outside, do something fun, get off your video games. And But in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I wish you could just play a video game and I could sit right here in this chair. You know I mean? 
because it's so hot out right now. Yeah, and I think, like, to your point, right, like, of course, like, no one, no one, no one, whether you have NMO or anything or you're right. otherwise healthy person wants to feel like a burden to their family and friends. But at the same time, I think it's all about, right, like, being considerate of others and their situations, um, you know, whether it's for me just because of my preferences or, you know, as a, as a, as a healthy person, you know, and it, you know, it goes both ways. And I know that your family is obviously considerate and supportive of you, but you know what I mean? Like it goes both ways and it's about balance. And of course that's easier said than done. Oh, completely. So you guys have a lot of good managements for heat. So stay inside on the AC if that's obviously not possible or conducive to a lifestyle because you want to be outside and active, um, you know, managing or limiting heat exposure, staying in the shade, obviously keeping up with hydration, uh, potentially getting a cooling vest, which is available um, to NMO and MS patients. And then something that I heard of some people doing is trying cryotherapy. Have you guys tried that? Okay, I really. Have. Was that helpful? Uh, it was, but I did it more for inflammation than the heating aspects, but I'll tell you what, it felt good. <laughs> but it was, then there are times where it's almost too cold, but I would do it again and yeah. again and again. Yeah, I've heard some good benefit of it to treat, like, these kinds of symptoms. Yeah, overall. Yeah. So cool. Um, ironically related to that, I honestly didn't even know this until last year when I just did a little social media post on temperature sensitivity. But actually, extreme cold, ironically, can not be good for some MS or NMO patients. Um, I learned that the cold actually is particularly with people who have spasticity. The cold can like worsen their spasticity. Have you guys experienced this? I kind of like think now because like I have pretty bad spasticity. I mean, not very, very bad, but like enough that sometimes at night I can't fall asleep because my leg just keeps like. That was me last night. I woke up crying at one of the morning. I'm like, I can't sleep my leg. Um, but I, I usually find that with. Actually, if I like, like, oh, okay, this actually answers a question earlier. If I exercise a lot, that happens. But, and then I guess the heat and the cold do that as well. If my hand, um, in the cold, my hand stops working, I just drop things. So oh, I it'll can't like, hold anything. It'll like freeze up? No, it like, like, okay, so like if I'm holding this water bottle, it just... It ah, just stopped. Like yeah. I've dropped entire dinners before. So you, you basically, like your nerves, like you're not being able to communicate to your hand to hold this. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't work. Now I just hold things in my right hand. And so I'm <laughs> assuming then, like your tips and tricks for that are like avoid the extreme cold. Have heat pads. Like yeah, it's just like be aware too, because like I, if I know that that's gonna happen. Like, or like that the heat or the cold is going to bother that, then just like be aware and use the other hand. Try not to hold anything too like nice or delicate in this hand. So it's just, again, like I said earlier, just be like super aware of your body. Mm -hmm. What would be, let's end this with um, a reference from Miss Congeniality. What would be your perfect date? And I mean this for the weather. (laughs) Fall. Anything in fall. October, November, when it's just, well, where we live in West Virginia, it, it's chilly, but it's not necessarily cold, and it's definitely not hot, but the sun's out. If I had my way, I would just live in October constantly, towards the end of October, Halloween-ish time, but that would be my perfect date, it would just be somewhere maybe low 70s, upper 60s, mid 60s, somewhere in there, and just maybe walking so I don't get super hot walking the dogs or and hanging out with my kids I mean that would be the perfect where no one knows that I have NMO or any form of any type of autoimmune anything I echo everything Julie just said (laughs) the autumn is the best time of year um you just you feel great I don't know. For me personally, I just feel great all the time in autumn. <laughs> There's no like being super cold, not being super hot. So it's it's very comfortable. So I think we just need to find like the the perfect climate um, where it's basically like autumn all the time, and we could just all live there together. It would be nice. That would be perfect. Well, thank you both. And where everyone's vaccinated too. 
<laughs> yeah. Hold the podcast. <laughs> so we're gonna create this perfect community for NMO and MS patients where no one even has to care or worry about living with an autoimmune disease because everyone gets it. Everyone like has the perfect temperature where it's autumn, so you don't have any like increased flare-ups due to the temperature. And everyone is compassionate and understands the basics of science, so they're vaccinated and prevent transmissible disease. Thank you guys so much for sharing your experiences and talking. I loved having you guys again. Thank you so much. We hope that this podcast episode was helpful for you um, in managing the temperature sensitivity this summer. Um, if you guys are in warm climates, please stay cool. Do the best that you can. Find an AC spot. Find a cool place in your home. Stay hydrated and keep up with those cooling vests that we